Hi, I'm Paul Hagen. I'm Senior Web Designer at the National Library of Australia. I believe at the moment you're working on a project involving geotagging and Flickr. It's mostly involving geotagging and the National Library's collection, but also hooking in on the wider crowdsourced geotagged photographs in Flickr. Um, so a lot of our ge geocoding is one area where our collection is fairly weak. Not a lot of content is actually has any latitude and longitude information applied to it. So I've been doing a few experiments to try to automatically extract place names and use available services to apply latitude and longitude to a collection item. I'm sort of seeing this being used as, well, primarily for location-based devices um, and location-based searches. So instead of sitting at your computer at home and carrying out a search on a particular town or a particular suburb or neighbourhood, when you're out and about with a mobile device, um, a GPS chip picking up your location and providing you with a lot of historical information about the environment that you're standing in. And, and services such as Google Street View that provide a current day view of an area, um, you can compare that with a historical image and see how that's changed over time. Uh, it's a way of enriching a, a, a record without actually having to do any hard work. One project that I did a lot of was trying to do a search by colour over our collection so that um, you could sit there with a colour picker and pick a blue colour and you get all the photographs and images from our collection that came back with that particular shade of blue um, or red or yellow or whatever colour you like. Um, in a way, a little bit of a novelty but once you start delving into it, it actually started to reveal some really interesting things about our collection um, and provided some indications of picking particular colours brought back particular objects from the collection. So it was like a facet, faceted search. So if you did a, a search on a pale yellow colour that was like a faded paper colour, suddenly you got all these charcoal drawings coming back. Um, particular shades of a dark purple mm -hmm. brought a lot of particular oil paintings um, and portraiture paintings that used a, a particular pigment in the oil paints. Um, so, yeah, it provided a very different way of analysing and breaking down the collection um, that wasn't available before. Had to go with some facial analysis stuff as well. Um, and that was trying to automatically do facial recognition over a lot of our collection. Um, was reasonably successful, but it needs a lot more work. Um, I was initially trying to identify that, yes, this was a particular person in a photograph, um, but that wasn't working that well. Um, the technology still needs to be improved a fair bit for a lot of the older, lesser quality images. Um, but I did have some quite good success that detecting faces were in images, so portraits, and instantly breaking out of the collection um, a certain series of, of images and uh, I guess it, all of this, I guess you combine the two of those together mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you can start to get, you know, start heading down the territory of, you know, being able to reveal all the books that are blue and have a person on the cover, um, yeah. that sort of breakdown rather than searching for a title and author or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, you know, if you've seen the cover of a book, getting it back somehow. I see hacking as getting a system or a program or something, doing something that wasn't intended to be useful in the first place. Um, so uh, a traditional search interface, accessing that information in a totally different way and reformatting the information, redisplaying it differently. Um, you know, in a lot of the cases of what I'm doing, instead of typing something into a search box, going behind the scenes and the GPS in my phone is acting as a search box. Um, I see that as hacking. I think the way that hackers get things done um, is, in a lot of ways, they just do it, um, which I think there's something valuable in that. Um, they're not hung up on a lot of traditional ways of doing things and you know, this is how we've done things in the past so we've got to go down this path to to with this new project or something like that 
um, yeah, they're, they're discovering new ways of doing things um, using different methods to, to display things in different ways or access things in different ways. Um, thinking outside the square, um, outside the normal. Um, and I think that's something that libraries can learn. Uh, this, the, the online environment is changing so rapidly um, that yeah, you can't sit still and, sit and just do the same thing over and over and over again in the same approach. Um, you have to do things differently. And I think that that's something that's a good lesson. Um, there's a lot of things that is good for society by people doing hacking. Um, and, yeah. and I guess some things like that, you know, hopefully flow through uh, to the libraries and things. You know, we sort of, I mean, for the National Library anyway, you know, that public involvement and, and trust, I guess, with the public, you know, we're seeing that with our newspaper digitization correction. You know, it's not hacking as such, but it's you know, people updating our information and, and, and that's been a real success. Nothing bad's happened from that. Um, yeah. Trust the public. Trust the public. They do good things. A lot of it is playful and experimenting and you know, hopefully you know, it's not all play because some of those techniques that you, you work on end up getting incorporated back into our more serious projects. Um, so, yeah, it's not really play, but I'm lucky to be working in an environment where I'm allowed to have this playtime and this sort of behaviour is encouraged. I think public libraries have a, a very different approach to this sort of collecting that the National Library does, being a national institution. We tend to build these big national services that are very institution to institution based. Um, they're not as much institution to community based um, because it's it's hard for us to do. Um, you know, Australia is such a big, broad, vast country, um, both distance wise and population wise. Um, but public libraries have they're a bit more in touch with their local communities. So whether that's providing services for you know, local history groups, uh, local. You know, the hub of the community, um, it's something that they can do and generate. Um, and then through all the institutional models that are in place for the National Library, that can get exposed to a much wider audience and incorporated into a much larger ecosystem, so to speak, um, than what's possible by just having it um, as a local community group or just within a local library. Um, but it's that grassroots level that the, a national institution can't really get to. Um, so it's really important.